Kia ora koutou Fano. Welcome back to another edition of Big Hearing News. Kia ora Chewy. How are you, sir? I am good, Pat. And you? Yeah, pretty good. Sexy looking top you're wearing there, mate. I like the looks of that. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if the camera's high definition enough to pick up how covered in dog hair I am. Well, if people um, haven't noticed when we make TikToks, your camera is definitely not high definition enough. Oh. We already know that. So I'll bring you one of mine. Wow. Um, hey, now speaking of merch, I think what I've made a bit of a decision. What we're going to do is merch is going to be available in the third week of every month. And there is going to be some one-offs available. And there is going to be other stuff like the hoodies Chewy, Chewy's wearing. that's going to be available all the time. We're also going to give you an opportunity to get your names put on the back of the hoodies. So there'll be a chance just to buy the hoodie that Chewy's wearing. And there'll be another chance to buy a hoodie with your name on the back that Chewy's wearing. And in white as well. And if you had told me, uh, Chewy, we could have come dressed up together. Like boyfriend and boyfriend. Is that right? Something like that. <laughs> if we were boyfriend and girlfriend, who would be the girl? And why? Jesus, Pat. Come on. No? Okay, we won't go there. Where we will where we will go to is a huge thanks to our patrons, love you guys to bits. Uh, we've had a couple of new patrons join in the last 24 hours. You guys aren't yet on the uh, on the board, on the billboard. Once we get a chance to get into the studio tomorrow, I'll make a new one and you'll be on there tomorrow night and then you'll get your shout out as well. All the beautiful people that help us make this happen. Uh, love you guys to bits. And um, yeah, literally could not do it without you. I think I've already pointed at this, but because they're an executive producer, I'll say it again. Andrew Whittington came on board this week as a super producer, uh, ex executive producer up from Super Patreon, so added some more, um, some more pinger into our pockets, which we appreciate greatly. Right, um, interesting day today, Chewy. Uh, it's still Waitangi Day. There's still fallout from Waitangi Day. Um, Luxon seems to have made movements towards dropping that word intention. Uh, but oh. I phoned up. I phoned up our old mate Martin Bradbury, bomber, uh, this mm. afternoon and had a chat with him about something else. And I suggested that it looks like you know, uh, I nearly said John Key. It looks like Luxon's finally kind of made the leap, and he's going to now state it more equivocally. Is that the right way to say that word? Um, and bomber had some interesting thoughts about that. So I just said, stop, 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 stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. Why well, don't you just come on board tonight and you're going to... Shut gonna, the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, keep it keep it quiet, keep it quiet. So let's bring Bomber on. Kia ora, sir. Kia ora, comrades. Doing well? Hey, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of... <laughs> it's a surreal situation where I think we've got a government that a lot of us warned about in how far right and hard right they were going to go. Yeah, And I think most of our fears have been borne out. Who had get involved in an American war in the first yeah. hundred days on their bingo card? <laughs> Didn't see it coming, kids. Didn't yeah. see it coming. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a rough one. Now, listen, what we'll do is uh, the three of us, let's all watch a bit of telly together because I want to play some of the conversations that uh, Mr. Luxon put out this morning. And then we're going to talk about, because um, uh, we'll play it first of all. We won't get into the weeds yet. Let's play it first of all. So it feels like we've been saying this for a long time. That word intention has been very, very problematic to me. Because like someone said on my Twitter yeah. feed very cleverly today, uh, Luxon had no intention to work with Winston Peters, you know, 12 months before the election. But of course, intentions change. So we've been very clear, like saying you're not being clear enough. This is not clear enough for us. It seems today he's changed his language to be more clear. Let's have a look at this clip. This is just a, a short 20 second clip from breakfast this morning. So everyone can hear it if you haven't heard it already. Yeah, we are. I mean, we've been very clear with our position, which is, yep, we're in an MMP environment. Uh, we've got an ACT Party that was a bottom line for them in terms of wanting to take it to referendum. Uh, you know the National Party position. Uh, we don't want to support a referendum at all. Uh, we've come to a compromise. This will enable an aeration of those views in a select committee process, and there's no support beyond that. So there's no support beyond that. That is that Chewy, back me up here. That is clearer, but we still haven't answered the question. What if they say let's make this a conscience vote? No, no journalist has asked mm. that question yet. Um, and so now it feels to me, although there is some news tonight involving Mr. Seymour, which scares the shit out of me to do this. We'll, we'll play that as well. But at least mm. we can now say he's being clearer, and now it's going to come down to do people trust him. Because he's not using intention anymore, but is it is it is, is he trustworthy enough to stick by it? So so that's us. Chewy, I'll give Chewy the first word, Bomber, because mm. because that's sort of where we're at. We've been saying stop using intention, stop, and he stopped using it. So that's where we are today, Chewy. What are your thoughts? Yeah, 
Um, I'm trying to find the quote, but it, it, it escapes me at the moment. But um, I did see him say, uh, as the leader of the National Party. Yep, I've got that somewhere as well. The, the Prime Minister, we will not support this. And I, I, I think that's uh, a lot more definitive. And I think that is proof that internet bullying works. <laughs> we have we been internet bullying him for weeks now. He got bullied at Waitangi, and I assume taken into a room, the door was locked, and all of his advisors bullied him. So here we are. Um, I, I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's taken him a painfully long time to get there. A painfully long time. And the only thing that has come out of it is, is that he's sort of gone, well, you know, if, if I didn't agree to potentially setting off a race war, we'd have to have another election, which is weak as fuck. Seymour was asked in one of his interviews, did you ever threaten to withhold your support if you didn't get it? And he said something like, no, we were never that explicit. I'm paraphrasing, but it sounded like he was saying, mm. we didn't have to say that, but hmm, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Now, Bomber, I can see you there winding up to get up, but I want to do one more little clip just to set the stage for what he's been saying today. Okay, so this again today was uh, on AM show this morning uh, with Lloyd talking about uh, National will not be voting for a referendum. But you're the Prime Minister, you're in charge of both of them. Why couldn't you talk, why couldn't you just stand up and just say, I'm not going to vote for the Treaty Principles Bill uh, from the ACT Party, it was part of our coalition agreement, boom, there's your reassurance with that. And one, you, you could also have talked about Te Reo Māori. Yes, we're renaming some of the public sector, but we're not anti Te Reo Māori. Why couldn't you give them those reassurances? Because that's what they wanted. Well, that's what I have spoken about. We've spoken extensively about the Treaty Principles Bill. You know, how did we get here? Why are we here? Uh, the reason but you is didn't. You didn't in your speech in yesterday. Here. Nowhere in here does it, you know, I've got your speech here, nowhere in here does it talk about the pre Treaty Principles Bill. And I know that you guys will support it to the first reading. And then you, you're going you're gonna to not support it after that. It's going to die. And it's going to be, it's, I mean, it's turning into a big distraction. The people who turned up there to hear you and your vision, and yes, it's a good vision for New Zealand. I quite liked it, to be honest, but they yeah. wanted some reassurance yeah. from you that we weren't going to strip the treaty. Other, encourage others to listen to it then, Lloyd. <laughs> It'd be great. Well, they they might be a little bit frustrated <laughs> as well when they were like, OK, we want to hear from him that he's not gutting the treaty. He is actually going to honour the well, treaty. Because the only reference that you've yeah. got in here, you talk about um, the treaty is our past, present and future. That's kind of as much as it got. And people wanted some reassurances that you, that you are, you are going to honour the treaty. Well, I talk quite a lot about the treaty, actually, in terms of the arc of the treaty and what it has meant to New Zealand in its history from 1840 to today, with a view of then reaching out to where we want to go for 1840. But let me deal with the Treaty Principles Bill. You know, I've spoken extensively about it in the weeks preceding Waitangi. I've spoken extensively about it with the iwi leaders that I've been meeting with now for over six months. Uh, and, you know, the reality is this. You know, we, we as a national party have the Treaty of, of Waitangi as a foundational element of our constitution. We do not support going to a referendum. Uh, for the ACT Party, that was a bottom line in their negotiation. Uh, they, you know, we took a lot, it was one of the major sticking points in the negotiation. We came to a compromise, that's the reality of an MMP environment, uh, and what we agreed to is we'll support it to first reading, but not beyond that. Uh, so we're consistent on that principle. That's been well articulated, well understood. Uh, what I wanted to talk to was about the arc of our history of New Zealand and where we're getting to and where we're trying to get to in 2040. So, yep, I hear you on the Treaty Principles Bill, yep, there's some tension around that, but I can tell you in my meeting with iwi leaders up and down this country. Yes, that's raised, uh, but more importantly, what is raised is how do we work together, how do we deal with housing outcomes for, for Māori, how do we deal with health outcomes, education outcomes. So there you go. Again, this morning, and the quote that I took out of that was, we're not going to support, we're, it's not going to, it's not going to get our support, it's going to not be on that. So he's being clearer now at least. Now, hmm. when I talked to Māori this afternoon, uh, you had a slightly different take on it, Martin. So, uh, and I think actually what you told me this afternoon has been re reflected in three news tonight with something David Seymour said. But let's give you a crack at it now, and me and uh, me and Chewy will sit back and watch the flames, and then we'll uh, then we'll play some more uh, some more audio video. Off you go, Chewy. I think I think what we're seeing here is a a panicked and frightened National Party. I don't think that they really understood the cultural backlash they were buying into with their. Faustian pact with ACT and New Zealand first. Um, you saw a Luxon who was frightened, uh, taken aback, 
he put the most meaningless nothingness speech together and the most meaningless nothingness speech was the one that he gave last year so he repeated <laughs> a lot of that yeah. he talked about wanting to look into the future to 2040 like some sort of oracle which is neat and fantastic and we all want to talk about what's going to happen in 16 years but i also think we're probably a little bit more focused on all of the trauma that he has allowed to occur right now all of this double talk that he is putting out saying, I have stamped my foot down. I'm not going to do this. We're not going to take it to a referendum. Okay, that's fine. What if for the first reading, David just dumps the referendum idea and just makes it a conscience vote? That's a completely different bill. Now, and 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 and, and, and Luxon could hand on heart say, well, it's a different bill. We're looking at yeah. something different now. National is um, not supporting it, but national is, MPs is, may. Right. Now, yeah. now here's, here's, here's where the rubber really hits the road, I think, for me. You have a conga line of transnational mining interests who are wanting to get into New Zealand and mine conservation land. They believe that there is a ton of rare minerals down there and Shane Jones, by God, is going to go find them. And if you look at the uh, new regulations that they want to put in to allow conservation land to be mined and the fast tracking power they're giving Shane Jones to green light that. When you take that in totality, you then understand why they're so keen on knocking the principles, the treaty principles out of legislation. Because once you do that, you don't have an obligation to work with Māori, right? Now, a lot of Māori are not going to give up or agree to conservation land being mined, right? But if you get rid of the principles, you don't have to negotiate with them in yeah. the first place. Yeah. This is all interconnected in terms of a superstructure of capitalism, which they are all focused on screwing around with right now, because their money, their eyes are on allowing transnational mining industries and, and, and interests into this country because they think that's their gold mine. And that's what they're playing for. That's what they're pushing for. To give Shane Jones, of all people, power of just being able to put something straight through because he thinks it's a great idea is a recipe mm. for disaster. So when Luxon says we're not going to go along with the referendum bill, that can mean a dozen different things. Why would you allow us to spastically dance on the lip of a volcano under the understanding, oh, we'll pull it back. Don't you worry, guys. We'll pull it all back and we'll put it to bed and we'll get on with everyone having a 10% increase in their housing price. That's what Luxon's trying to sell. But it's a panic because he is being ripped to pieces on both sides by two politicians who are far better than he is. Yeah. Winston Peters and David Seymour are probably the biggest players in Parliament. And Luxon is so incredibly weak. Every single time, every single week so far, David Seymour and Winston Peters have managed to overshine the Prime Minister. That's that's yeah. not a good deal. That is not a good deal. And so when he tells us, oh, we're not going to let this happen, it's meaningless nonsense. He's mm -hmm. not calling the shots. He's not calling the shots. Winston's calling the shots and David's calling the shots. Luxon isn't. Hey, um, I don't want to freak you out even more and make you guys angrier, but you mentioned conscience vote there, Marty, yeah. and we've been talking about that for six months. No yeah. one, And I, I've actually finally got so sick of it that I've been tweeting directly at reporters who have access. Fucking ask him. Ask him, Jack Tame. Ask him, you know, whoever it is, and no one's asked him yet. And it's fine, but, but it's finally been asked tonight, hasn't it? No, not really. Because I think the response on TV3 isn't even about a conscience vote. I think the response that uh, he gives on TV3 just basically says we could just take it to the House. This is, this is yeah. frightening. Have a listen yeah. to this. You are ruling out supporting this bill beyond select committee process. I can tell you that the National Party position and leader of the National Party now, not as Prime Minister, uh, is that we will not be supporting that bill. Ah, oh, look, it's Willie or won't he? He's used different language at different times, but my bet is that when it comes up for a second vote, which, you know, is maybe a year away from now, what will decide it will be what the public want, and no one knows that at this point because it hasn't been written, hasn't been debated. Seymour's election proposal was to rewrite the principles, Thanks. pass the bill through well, Parliament, and essentially have it ratified by public sure referendum at the next election. Do you promise that there will be a referendum at the end of the treaty principles? Huge question, yeah? Like, this yep. is what we've been told. Mm. We're fighting about this referendum. And she's asking him straight up, 
you, there is actually, if, if this goes through, there, is, there will actually be a referendum. And what does he say? It's terrifying. You ready for it? At the end of the Treaty Principles Bill, if that bill is successful. No, it's quite possible that the legislation will pass and the job will be done. Parliament has finally spoken. You could fundamentally change the constitutional arrangement of our country, basically, with 8% of the vote. No, that's not accurate. We can make a proposal that the majority of New Zealanders could choose to adopt. Potentially, though, without a public vote. Well, they would have to support a parliament that voted for the law to go through, and they have elected that parliament. The parliament that they elected said that they wouldn't support it. And as I say, they may well change their mind. Change. So, Marty, I mean, I don't want to poo-poo the idea of a conscience vote, but he's not even talking about a conscience vote. He's saying that, well, Parliament could... He, he's basically saying, we've been put here with a mandate to do this. Maybe we'll just do it. That's right. That's, that's right. And that's, and that's why Luxon's assurances mean nothing. They mean nothing. They mean nothing. He, he, he could absolutely not agree to take it on to a referendum. But they could have already made that decision and they're just going to do it through Parliament. Yeah. 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 So so what we're getting is we're getting Luxon we're getting Luxon being clearer, saying we will not support this now. But what we're not getting is could it be a conscience vote? And look, I don't want to become the conspiracy theorist, right? I've been no, saying no, no, all the way. This is, this is, this is I, I, not a conspiracy theorist. No, 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 you're, you you're have, right. You have these transnational mining interests lining up now. This is happening. This is happening, guys. This is happening. Mm. So he could then come out and it could be a conscience vote, then, quote, National's not supporting it, or it could get passed through Parliament, yeah. then I have we haven't supported a referendum because there wasn't one. So we ain't out of the woods yet, folks. No, yes, he's being, no. he's being more clear. He is using more clear language, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's all over. No, that's right. That's right. That's right. And, and if you look at how serious David Seymour is about this, I mean, it is absolutely possible that there is a quid pro quo arrangement between ACT and New Zealand First. If New Zealand First gives ACT support on this, then ACT will give New Zealand First support on reforming the Waitangi Tribunal, which is a big issue for New, uh, for New Zealand First, right? <clears throat> so there's plenty of horse trading that can happen between now and when this gets decided in a year's time. Yeah, because Luxa is now also in the position, and Chua, you've been very good with this going, the, the problem that they were trying to solve before the election was forming a government. That's the only problem they yep. were trying to solve. Chui's quote, I'm just rephrasing, I'm not taking credit for that, Chui. It's been very, very clear. But now he faces the problem of how do I keep a governing government? So even though they've mm -hmm. made the coalition agreements, if any at any stage, like um, Seymour says, yeah, I'm out, or Peter says, I'm out, then it's done. So even though they've signed documents, even though they've got a coalition, um, Luxon is basically technically still in exactly the same place he was when he was sitting in that hotel trying to get this over the line. Chewy, you've said nothing yet, mate. You should jump in. Um, look, I, I'm, Bomb was mentioning the mining companies and that. No, I, I was watching uh, a little clip or an interview, uh, Q and A interview, I think, with. Uh, famously fucking useless uh, West Coast MP Maureen Pugh. <laughs> and and I, 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 I've I got to mention it. Struck by lightning three times. When when do you learn? When do you learn the lesson? God will um, take her. God, the fourth time, God, you'll get her then. <laughs> but fantastically, they mentioned the, the challenges of the West Coast and how the West Coast has turned their back on the Labour Party. And 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 they framed it as a, it's all about mining. And then they mentioned this little factoid. Mining, which in the scale of the economy of the West Coast, is third behind agriculture and tourism. Now, I don't know, man. Have you ever jumped on a plane, flown for 36 hours to see an open cast mine in a <laughs> forest? It, 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 and it's just like, oh, they're going to make all of these changes because of their third highest industry it's 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 mad but everything is is like oh we're going to mine the beaches uh we want to nibble away at, at, at public land and and i just have a real problem with like oh public land who's that going to a private company okay fantastic no um so i i think you're right there's a lot of people wanting to exploit mineral rights and they're all knocking on the door and famously we've done a terrible job of sort of going oh okay that's going to be good for the economy and these guys are definitely going to pay us enough royalties for the irreparable damage that we're doing and there was this great interview with a gold miner 
and I just wanted to go, mate, they've just found billions and billions of dollars worth of gold in Otago that isn't in a forest. Uh, so you should move. <laughs> you should move or, or open up uh, a, a forest walk for a donation or something. It, it's just this this idea of the past. It, and, and, and that goes for oil and gas exploration. Like they want to open up like testing for it but there's not enough time there's not enough timeline for them to exploit it and again every time we've done it we get minimal royalties and just hold it up as a big success it's it's just it's just crazy mm. marty yeah <clears throat> if you're going to exploit the mineral wealth of your country then you want to ensure that mineral wealth goes to the people that never happens here it's always, always basic, low product stuff. They want to exploit as much as they can. And, and, and the, the, the problem with the deep sea oil uh, uh, is that in New Zealand, it's so bloody deep. It's much easier to do fracking in Canada mm. or much cheaper to do fracking in America. I mean, the level of oil has got to have run down to such a bloody level that you're talking $200 a barrel before it starts becoming profitable, right? Because it's so bloody deep and dangerous, this part of the world. So even if we would actually start making royalties, it would be in a position where things have become so dystopian with the oil supply chain lines that they're actually coming to bloody New Zealand to drill for it. That's mm. a that's a Hunger Games section of, <laughs> of global. Like, like a lot of shit will have gone bad and wrong before they are drilling off the coast of New Zealand, right? A lot of no. shit. So it just ain't going to happen. So the only game in town is this minerals and, and, and mining. And you can just see... The, I mean, the fact that they're trying to ram all of this stuff through under agency, under, under sorry, under urgency, that they're in the first hundred days, no less, to give Shane Jones the power to just sign off on the back of a bloody envelope any crazy deal that pops into his lunch menu, right? While he's out there eating all the bloody crayfish and someone's, oh, what about this shit? He's like, oh, great, mate. That's that's how you run banana republics, right? That ain't how you're supposed to run a democracy. And I just, I just think the yeah, the conga line of privatization that's lining up, and it's the only agenda these guys have got. I mean, one of the things that's been so telling about the tobacco lobbyists, National had no plan. It literally was just talking yeah. points from the lobbyists. There's no actual National Party policy. And I think you're starting to see this across a whole board of things. They're ripping down all the legislation that Labour passed, and they said, "Don't you worry, we're coming back with something really amazing." Well, no, no, you're not coming back with anything really amazing. It just looks like lobbyist talking points fleshed out to look like a policy. And I think that we're going to see a lot of that around about a whole a whole range of industries as they desperately try to get the economy to move. But I, 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 I don't think any of this is going to bloody help. And I think when New Zealanders realise how much they're looking to mine, I mean, they're, they're talking about conservation land. It's, it's no secret now. That, that's where they're going to go mine. And I just think when New Zealanders really understand the enormity of that, the, the backlash will get even more immense. So you'll have an environmental backlash. You'll have a Maori backlash. You'll have a, a renter's backlash. You'll have a worker's backlash. And this is, this is where they start making enemies very quickly. Yeah. And let's not forget the cost of living is still burning so many New Zealanders out there. And they're not coming up with any solutions. Oh no, they solved that, didn't they? And the hundred it was a priority. I heard I I mean I blacked out after Luxon said it was a priority the fifteenth time. Um and I'm sure it's buried somewhere in all of the anti Maori policies that they actually had in the hundred days. But yeah, it's it's solved. It's solved. <laughs> I was at the supermarket today getting some mints to make some food for tonight. Kilo yep. of mints. Twenty-seven dollars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, yeah. you went. You went to the wrong supermarket. You needed to go out to South Dunedin to the countdown that's infested with rats. They've got some uh, great deals. They've got some bad uh, price to clear. Hey, um, I want to. This is almost taking a step away or a bit backwards from what we're talking about because a lot of the things we've talked about, especially especially Chewy, is how Luxon's not very good at this. Right? He's not very good at this, and he doesn't have good. Uh, what's the word he doesn't have good like the ability to see what he should be doing to read the room sort of thing as well mm. this morning really 
yeah, the, the, this morning on breakfast as well, you know, we give Jenna Lynch a bit of, sh- a bit of stick every now and again, but she, she, along with many other in the media today, made some very good mm. points about Mr. Luxon missing the moment where he could have made a massive difference to himself, to his position, and to yep. the uh, controversy swirling around him when he was at Waitangi, and he could have said from the podium, guys, we're not voting for it. And he didn't do it. He couldn't read the room. And so I just want to play this, give uh, Gina her credit where credit's due. Uh, she's not the only one who said it today, but but it's important to just point out again what an idiot this guy is. He could have said that on the treaty grounds. He could have saved that message, and it would have been a real moment for him addressing the concerns that Māori have been raising. The other thing that he uh, said to you was a little bit of an explanation of why we ended up here in the first place. I mean, everyone, um, everyone kind of was reading between the lines, and obviously the ACT Party went into negotiations with this as a bottom line. But again, he hasn't really clearly laid out that path thus far. That's something else, not to cut her off. He's been saying all day today, oh, we've been very clear about this for a long time. It's like, you no, haven't. you haven't. Never I haven't been. been. If the audience hasn't clear, that means you haven't been clear. Bah, he's right. let everyone kind of do the reading into it for him. But today he said the ACT Party had it as a bottom line. It was a major sticking point in negotiations. And that was what they had to do to get a government across the line. Mm. I mean, that, that, that's absolutely true. He did leave the door a little bit ajar with that um, Treaty Principles Bill, and, and then this morning he kind of slammed it and was like, no. Nah. And you're right, it could have been an incredible moment for him if he'd done that up in Waitangi. Yeah, could have been an incredible moment if he'd done that up at Waitangi, but he didn't read the room, he didn't have the initiative, he hasn't got the nous. I think, Bomber, what you're saying about who's really... Like, I'm, I don't know if it's come out, it'd be pretty easy if it if it hasn't yet to do it for a cartoonist to have both uh, Seymour and Peters above him with the puppet strings and have Luxon down the bottom just doing that because that's that's kind of how it feels he, he 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 does everything on reflection and we weren't going to talk about this and this thing I've got some more clips to play later Chewy about the 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 carbon copy speech like if he's thought about an excuse today which is horse shit because if that was truth he would have said it yesterday when he was asked about it he thinks about everything in the rear vision mirror. I guess it's exactly what they've been doing the whole time, Chewie, about looking backwards as to when this country used to be great. His politics and the way he works is in the rear vision mirror. He doesn't know what to say in the moment. He goes to the ninth floor and gets advice. He then speaks very clearly the next day on what he meant, which is a losing strategy, Marty. Uh, look, I think I think what we saw with him suddenly turning the story of, didn't you just repeat the same bloody story? And him, oh, oh, I meant to do that. I was doubling down because we're, because we're doing the same and, and we're holding this and this. this. But if, if any of that was true, exactly as you said, if any of that was true, then he would have actually used it as a point during the actual speech. That's mm. not true. Or, he didn't. Or, he didn't or, when the, or when the journalist asked yesterday. Why oh, that, that's right. That's yeah. key, but they were caught out. Yeah. But what I think has happened is the National Party hierarchy have freaked out so much about how shit lucks in it that they've actually sent him this is me this is what i think i think they've sent him on a 48 hour ceo boot camp to be more assertive right and i think that what you saw him playing out was a private boy alpha jock move right he doubles down he's like you know and see, because all he's trying to do is sell the authority i think yeah. everyone's been t- terrified and taken aback by how weak he is with Winston and David. And so he's got this new strategy of doubling down and looking dynamic and I call it my way. It's all garbage. It's all basic 101 CEO um, uh, mind talk. And it's all sort of trying to to make it look like he's got more power than he actually really does. He's got very little power and just lying to our faces yeah. about oh no nah, bro, no nah, I meant to do that, eh bro? And you're just like Oh, come on. This is garbage. You're lying to our faces and you expect us to believe it. I mean, this is this is just such basic stuff. And I and I don't think because he and I think I think the writer's still trying to get the right narrative about him. Remember at first it was, oh, mm. isn't he so great? 
great because he's not a politician. And that's why he keeps getting things wrong and has to come back and tell us in 24 hours what, what he really meant. So, so at first it was, oh, he's, he's not a politician. That's so great. Then he's the great deal maker. Oh, he's going to cut a deal. It's so good. Oh, he's the best because he's such a great deal maker. And then the deal maker comes out and I go, oh, my God, this is shit. National's been screwed over by Winston and Seymour. So now, now it's, oh, but he's moderate. Oh, it's a moderate government, and so and and yet they've passed legislation for eight thousand tax cuts for eight thousand deaths for, for 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 tobacco tax cuts. Um, the, the first thing they pushed through was attacking workers. Then it was attacking renters. Then it's taking environment money. This is not moderate. They've got us into a war with America in the first hundred days. This isn't moderate. They they're, they're attacking Maori left, right, and centre, and then sort of go, oh, but we're not going to go through with it, eh? We're just gonna we're gonna light the cross, right? Here we we're gonna light the cross. <laughs> But then, no, no, and, and some, look, some people in white, you know, hoods are going to gather. But then, then once the once the cross is burning, and everyone's, but then we'll pull it back. Then we'll pull it back for the brink. And you're going, this isn't moderate. This is crazy. And now the latest story, they're trying to get the spin on him. Oh, he's he's the great Svengali. He's a chess master. He's playing David <laughs> out, and he's playing David out, and he's just such a genius. The reality is he's incredibly weak. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, and he's getting screwed over by the two best players in the game. That's the reality, yeah. and we don't know how to frame that. Yeah, you say you say uh, they're talking about him playing chess. I think maybe maybe last card, maybe oh maybe snap. Snap's probably about the level of uh, of expertise he's at the moment. Hey, um, when's the podcast come back? Uh <laughs> We've been such lazy tricks. <laughs> we just love being able to, you want to come back here? Ah, still on the beach, man. Still on the beach. But a lot of people have said, you two lazy buggers, get back to it. Uh, we want to see the show back. So I, th I think we're coming back in about a fortnight's time. I think cool. a fortnight's time. Tuesday night still? Same, same. Oh, yeah, yeah, time, yeah, yeah, same yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. All right. Hey, dude, thanks for coming on board. Always love having Always you Always a pleasure, gentlemen. You're doing God's work and you're providing the space to actually challenge what's going on. And I think I think places like this are going to become so vital in opposition to this government because what these buggers want to do is take us to a place that isn't New Zealand, that isn't the New Zealand I want to be part of, and it just cements into place a 19th century white settler privilege that has no place in the 21st century. And, I, and, we, and, 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 and places like this and news places and spaces like this are going to become more important than ever. No pressure. No pressure. Respect, <laughs> brother. Respect. All right, Bomber. Cheers, brother. Cheers, matey. See you, well. See you next time. There you go, Martin Bomber Bradbury. Let's get to some of these chats that have been coming in. Thank you for the super chats that have been popping in. Frosty, uh, Mr. Bradbury, will the walking group oh, ever come back? There you go. We asked that. I love listening to BH and the working group for my political news. Yep. So a couple of weeks. I didn't see your question, sorry, Frosty, before that, but I asked it anyway. And there you go. A couple of weeks' time. Uh, Spides is in there again. G'day, mate. Uh, I indulge in a little uh, delight in part in being part of the reason he ran scared from Waitangi. Next job, stop this chaos coalition altogether. Uh, agreed, a hundred percent. And uh, JC says, "I uh, thank you for the twenty dollars super chat. It's very generous. I uh, keep an eye on EU FTA, uh, so the European mm. Free Trade Agreement, Paris Agreement conditions. Banks in EU will stop funding any not meeting ESG conditions. Exports will be blocked where standards are not met. With uh, where will they send their extractive economy? Crap, what's that word? Extract extractive." Extra as yep. extractive sorry this happens with my brain every now and again extractive economy crap there you go from jc and i appreciate the uh the super chat anything else in the chat that you want to get to chewy oh chewy's gone i guess he must have just pushed the wrong button how about that i'll tell you what we'll do then uh we will uh oh there you go chewy's back that pushed is the wrong button did you button that i didn't know did that <laughs> so that's going to get remapped in a little bit i'm um, very impressed with how quickly you got back brother you were gone for like nine i'm gonna when we finish this and i go to re-upload stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna time that just to um, edit that out it's so smooth sure um i i did see this guy I'm, I'm so sorry that this comment wasn't here when bomber was actually here but i hope he's still looking bomber rules sorry i threw a water balloon at you on high street <laughs> that, that, there's a story there um gary here with a great comment has everyone forgotten that mine workers don't come home from work when national and mm. are in charge of mining yikes yeah um and sam here with a good comment and and i think this is 
this is a thing that a lot of New Zealand exporters do. You guys from Duds should know that Ocean Gold export unrefined gold to Dud Dodge tax. Its final processing step is done elsewhere to avoid paying top dollars in export. Okay. So th this happens with timber as well. Like uh, you often saw it mentioned with um, swamp kauri, that it was it was just sent as unfinished, extremely high value wood when you turn it into something. But we just send it as, as like swamp wood, and somebody else you know does doesn't have to pay the tax on the much higher value product that we could get out. So when we talk about the high value economy, you'll often hear. Um, Luxon talk about the high value economy. economy. M my question is, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And when it comes to like oil and gas exploration, like I think that ship has has well and truly sold for exactly uh, sailed uh, for for exactly the reason that Bomber said. It's it's deep. It's challenging. It's got to be expensive to make it worthwhile. And and our chance to be like Norway. And just go, yeah, okay, go for our oil fields, but we are going to pump so much of the royalties that we demand for that back into our social services. There's a reason why Norway has the standard of living that it does. Mm. And they have used that oil money to make sure that they don't need to rely on oil as much as, as you know, they've got the highest uptake of electric cars in Europe. Wow. Wow. Segway, we'll get to that shortly about mm. the National Party decimating the EV market in New Zealand. But first, I wanted to tell you about something tomorrow night. I kind of teased this last night. Uh, Dr. Alastair Rees is a farmer, a historian, and a public theologian. Uh, he was asked by Bishop Kitohi, Kitohi uh, who was responsible for organizing the speakers for the dawn service, to come and speak at the dawn service at Waitangi Day. Um, so we will have Dr. Rees with us tomorrow night. Um, someone who was behind the podium uh, at the dawn service sharing a message and we will find out from him what it was all about. He's, it's, it, I've, I've known Alistair for feels like 20 years when I probably haven't talked to him for about 15. Got on the phone to him today and went, hey, and he went, hey, and we, he'll be on tomorrow night from nine o'clock. It'll be really interesting. So if you saw the news and you saw, you know, Mr. Luxon at the dawn service saying his prayers and that kind of stuff, well, that was the podium that Alistair was at and, and sharing his message to the people about Waitangi Day and what it was all about. So that's tomorrow night. Um, here's something else I want to talk about, Joe, and we, we touched on it with Bomber, but this is now officially the excuse that Mr. Luxon is giving for cutting and pasting the speech. This was from the AM show this morning. So, Let's have so a listen. Well, look, it's very deliberate. We want a consistency of message, you know, what I've felt about the truth. So, it's very deliberate. Repeating was very deliberate. Like I've already said to Bomber, um, horse, I don't, such I, what, bullshit. what I don't actually understand from the, maybe, I don't know whether I would, no, I probably would. I'd go, I don't find that answer particularly plausible for these reasons. If it was definite, why did you run away from Jenna Lynch and the treaty grounds and not answer that question yesterday? If it was deliberate, why didn't you mention it? And you know, I don't find that plausible. They never do that. They never push back quite as hard as that. Maybe they can't, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what their managers would say, but that's the response that he needs to be given. I don't find this plausible treaty is what I've felt about the treaty for a long time. What I felt in 2023 will be what I felt this year, and that's actually what I'm going to do next year. So people can trust us when we say there will be no year. change to the Locked treaty. Yeah. So, so no, need, no reason to go. It'll be funny if it's different, won't it? Everyone will be going like, why did you change it? Particularly as Prime Minister, uh, my views and our views on that. Is that actually how you're explaining this? You, you want a consistency of your message? Because what it looks like is, I mean, I know it's inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, but it's now an unnecessary distraction, and it just looks a bit lazy. No, look, it is deliberate. We want to, we want to make sure we've got a consistency of communication. Bullshit. You know, as you yeah, I call Lloyd, bullshit. So does Lloyd. Look at his face. Understanding about what our government what? believes what? about the treaty. The uh, I expressed it, I thought, well in 2023. There are extracts that I used again in 2024. There, and again, Extreme. I'll have the same similar messages I suspect in 2025. Uh, in that context, I was explaining the arc of New Zealand's history and progress, uh, starting from 1840, what the treaty has meant for us, why it's made us a better country. And I think that's been expressed well. Um, I went on to then talk about our vision for 2040 and what we're trying to do as a country together uh, and obviously our plans for the current current term. So, um, Such a good point made by Bomber just tonight. Who gives a crap about 2040 when the country is you know, about to explode today? 
We want to know about today. Today is the time that we're talking about and we should be focusing on. Yeah, consistency of message matters, uh, and I want people to understand there is no change to the Treaty of Waitangi. There is no change to any treaty settlements. The treaty is our past, present and future. I mean, now, now you're making this even more of an unnecessary distraction because you're not just saying, yes, it was sloppy, um, I'm sorry for it, I'll talk to um, my speechwriters, and then we can all move on. Now you're saying that this is intentional and you're, you're after consistency of message and you might use the same speech again next year. Why don't you just apologise and we'll move on? Well, again, you know, consistency of message, as I said, is important. It's what I believed last year, it's what I believe this year, it's what I believe next year. OK, so, so will you do the same at like an Anzac Day ceremony? Will you just recycle the speech you, you gave at Anzac last year? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know, but the point is, um, you know, what I believe oh, very strongly I is that the treaty has been very important to New Zealand's history. We've wrestled with it. Uh, we've gone up and down and we've had, uh, you know, challenges around it. It's caused pain for people. But we've actually entered into that reconciliation process, I think, very constructively as a country. Uh, and that's what we want to continue to do as we go forward. Okay, can I talk about the right so there you go this is so, sort of a part of the same conversation we've just been having but this I just I, it's important to highlight horseshit when we see it now again especially from the government lots of people are always like well did you say such and such about the other guys these guys are the government now these guys are in the news now these are the guys making the headlines now so the majority of what we talk about is going to be these guys no matter where we sit politically mm. and it's just I, I almost I wonder if they did a fist pump when they thought of that reason last night, or I wonder if they're embarrassed today about how no one believes the reason. I wonder which one of those things actually happened. But it's just, he, my guess is he had no idea it was exactly the same. I mean, I mean, not to defend him, he probably does, uh, he's probably done 200 speeches in the last 12 months. Mm. So he probably had no idea, which probably means it went to the back room. And we should have a look if anyone from parliamentary services has been let go from his office while they're trying to say it was intended. But really in the back room, someone's been like, you can leave. Thanks very much for putting me in this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect them to remember what he said at Waitangi last year. Like, I also don't believe that he wrote that speech. I believe that that's a, that's a speech writer. Now, and, and that's not a criticism. Like lots of lots of leaders do that. They've got a speech writer. They'll take a pass at it, put their own language into it, and away away you go. But somebody on his job's team to go shit. Did we just pull something out of a binder? Can can we have a look at last year's speech just to to see if there's any points we you know? Because a lot has changed since last Waitangi Day. For sure. It's his first Waitangi day as Prime Minister, and he is responsible for bringing a hugely contentious issue right to the fucking forefront, and people are big mad about it. What a fantastic opportunity to show that you're a leader, and he didn't do it. And now he's also not being a leader by trying to cover his ass more than he's, he's saying, you know what? Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I fucked up. To, to even go, you know, that 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 stupid throwaway question, are you just going to recycle your speech for Anzac Day? And the answer was, I don't know. Yeah. What the hell? Like, way to just set up another issue. Now there's going to be interns at all the major um, networks just going, okay, cool, pull a speech from last Anzac Day. Let's true see. True as. That is so he true. He is setting himself up for someone yeah. to go through these speeches at these events and again credit where credit is due spider mm -hmm. um talking about mr luxon speaking at waitangi a friend of mine was uh watching slash listening to the show last night and heard the interview we did with perry and when perry talked about um the the speech that luxon gave was not for maori it was obvious no. because the way no, he delivered no, it not. was not for Maori. And the, I had a person contact me and go, do you want to hear who Luxon's, who, who Luxon's speech was for? Go mm -hmm. to News Talk ZB and listen to a couple of callers after the five o'clock show yesterday. So I did. So I'm going to play some stuff for you, Chewie. Oh, now, I, I want to do a disclaimer angry. here. And the disclaimer is this. This may not be a fair representation of the conversation that was on this radio station for uh, the day after Waitangi Day. Or was it Waitangi Day yesterday? No, Waitangi Day. It may not be fair. Completely up for that. Um, I used to work for them. I know the vibe of them. 
um, I've heard these conversations with me thousands of times. But my mate said to me, when you were talking to uh, to Perry, and he said that I thought of this. So I went and had a look, and I grabbed some, and we're going to have a listen to them. So here's the, there are only, I've got four little clips for you. They're only 20 to 30 seconds each. They're going to be a couple of minutes, but I want you to hear. So the host, whose name is Tim, he's talking to people and asking, um, you know, what do you think of the Prime Minister uh, not writing a new speech for this? And this is the response that someone gave him when the question was posed or posted about the repetition of the speech. Have a listen to this. Strange that a Prime Minister wouldn't do a new speech, an entirely new speech. You can ring through just as Grant has done. Hello. Yeah, Tim, now, what would you have, uh, or what would your view have been if Luxton had said that worldwide throughout history, 95% of the advancements in science, medicine and technology have been brought oh. about by members of the white race, but the white race never gets Ooh. any credit for that, and maybe they should. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. Oh, That's how me. bad it is. That's how bad. I got more, I got more, I got more. The call went on, and the host uh, was talking to this caller about did he really feel like he was, <laughs> I'm watching the chat, <laughs> did he really feel like he was, you know, that hard off being part of the yeah. quote unquote white race? Have a listen. The white race wow. is sort of blamed, basically. Anything that's wrong in the world is supposed to be the fault of the Someone white race. Someone come and get and their nothing granddad. that's good is supposed to is uh, because of the white race. So I think that's, uh, that was preceding the... Uh, Do you really the, feel uh, that? The, the, uh, Yes, I do. I mean, uh, I don't feel that. Not though. everyone. I'm wise. I don't feel that. Uh, well, well, when I say don't feel that, you don't feel that some people say that, or because people do say that. Yeah, some people say that. They uh, people yeah. in his rate payers group yeah. say that. Some people do say people that. They typically, in his neighborhood Facebook group <laughs> say that. Typically referred to as filthy old racists. Those are the people who say that. Jesus um, I'm, I'm going to play you another one. Yeah, there was a. This was a very straight up. This was the next call. The next call after it. And if people want to listen to this, 5 p.m. News Talk ZB, you can do their week on demand. That's what I did. Um, and he, uh, the host was talking to a woman, and um, they were it was talking about. She defended Luxon's cut and pasting by basically doing whataboutism and putting down Jacinda Ardern. They're still out there. Have a listen. But we need to move forward as a country. And incidentally, uh, you went on about the Prime Minister uh, having a part of his speech, which was part of another speech that he used a couple of years ago. Last year. Well, hey ho, Chris Hipkin said, be kind, be good. Well, shit, yeah, right. That happened to be something that Cindy said so many times. Why, do you, why did you call her Cindy? Because I can't stand her. Uh, and one more thing, because we got to, Tim is a great host, right? Um, he, he's a guy that does weekend shifts, and he's, he's very, very good. And he finished up the call with her beautifully. What happens, and I've talked to you guys about this before, when you get people, and I'll say who have that kind of ilk about them, I don't know if it's her in particular, who's saying we should be one people. What they're saying is you need to be like us, right? Mm. To be one people, it's always be like me. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. So there was a whole bunch of um, conversations around you know, let's do this, basically saying, let's do this on my terms, on my terms. And this is the last 20 seconds of the conversation with her. We are Kiwis. We uh, have got, um, we, ha we, we should be able to come to some sort of sense of social justice. We should be able to come sort of to some sort of consensus of how we move forward. And I am very strong in believing that the good of New Zealand um, is at its a very pivotal point at the moment. Okay, but it's it's so pivotal, but not pivotal enough to have an entirely new speech about it. Thank you for the call. <laughs> Tim's got to get a clap for that. It's all so important. It's the most important thing in the world, but not important enough to put a little bit more effort into your speech, Mr. Luxon. Chewy, I've heard that a few times. Look, actually, I've heard that a thousand times because I used to work there. Trust me. Um, but you're welcome to comment on that. So, so that's who, on some level, the kinds of people, not all, but the kinds of people that Christopher Luxon was making those speeches for. That's the, that's what I wanted to bring together. So we've heard from Barry from deepest, darkest fucking Southland and Karen there. Jesus. Like, 
I've I've spent a lot of time hanging out with literal white supremacists in their forums and, and and that sort of thing and and hearing the language the hateful terms that they use yeah and i guess for me compartmentalizing it you know you know it's out there and you know that these people talk to each other like that when they think they're in a safe space mm. to hear someone call up New Zealand's most popular radio show, radio station, radio show, and go, woe is the white race. We never get any credit. No advancement on this planet has ever been made without the white, the white man in control. That, that would not be out of order. That would not be out of place in, in those forums, like on, fucking storm front or something. I am stunned. I am absolutely stunned by that. And then to hear Karen in the second call with such venom still in her voice. Yeah, but still. Over someone that hasn't been in the job for, for over a year now. I I know ZB is a, is a viper's nest. And credit to that that presenter for pushing back it yeah a bit on great us. Guy. like absolutely i i don't think i'd be able to find words if i was the person taking those calls do, do you know what and i've talked about doing and how much i love talk back i would have loved to have taken that call i would have relished taking that call that's why when i was a little do nothing overnighter right so smallest audience overnight i was the most complained about host on news talk zb I would have been like Barry. Um, you've you've won a prize tonight for 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 the best comment. Can I have your address, please? I'm going to be sending you a little something. Um, I want to say thanks to Kiwi Skirt uh, Kiwi Skirt for a super sticker. Now the system that we use, um, it doesn't pop up. We get this. It just tells there's been a super sticker. So what I've done, is I've actually got. I've gone on to uh, I've gone on to the old YouTube. This is going to be weird because it's going to be a bit of. Um, seeing ourselves seeing ourselves that's a super sticker there so i actually want to see what it is it's a little uh Ooh. it's a little little um hippopotamus crying saying epic fail so that's it there and you watch this this will go inception now it'll go then it'll go again it'll go smaller it'll go smaller it'll go. <laughs> there you go inception so there you go thanks for the super sticker uh kiwi i just wasn't quite sure how to yeah that that's really for you people on youtube you can enjoy that <laughs> so yeah there you go i just i think it's I think two things are important, right? The first is, I want to be really clear. I don't believe, personally, that's not the majority of national voters. It might be the majority of ACT and New Zealand First voters, but I don't believe those opinions are the majority of national voters, however they are represented in and amongst national voters. And when um, Perry was saying last night the speech was not for Māori, those are the kinds of people that would have lapped up that speech. In fact, she did. I don't know if I played it there, I can't remember, but I listened to the whole sort of five minutes of the Venom and she lapped up the speech. She called him statesmanly and all sorts of stuff. That's who the speech was for, that, that person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he wasn't speaking to anybody at Waitangi. That, no. Like if he was, he he would have been able to, to react to some of the things that have been said in the two and a half hours of speaking yeah. before he got up. Yeah. He was not an active listener. He was not an active participant until his time came to stand up. Yeah. And then just went That's straight not to a me, leader. That's... Went straight to last year's words. <laughs> yeah. And when and when people say that one of his strengths is that he's not a politician. This is this is what you get. Like leaders are you know, not all politicians are good people. I think some some people to get into politics you have to be a little bit broken. Yeah. But a lot of people get into politics and they start at the bottom and they have always been involved in leading movements, leading boards, leading this that and the other thing. They're leaders. They know how to talk to people. And I think what we have seen through Luxon's entire tenure, his brief tenure as an MP, his brief tenure as leader of the National Party, and his brief tenure as Prime Minister of this country, is that he does not have a leadership bone in his body. Right. He does not have 
political instincts and he doesn't have the ability to listen when people tell him he's wrong none of those are leadership qualities and when it comes to a moment where we might look to him for true leadership there's going to be an absence there and we'll feel it like he's got less leadership ability like i i said the other day when it came to john key his leadership was 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 guided by public opinion forums at least you could count on that at the moment, when we're talking about this this treaty principles thing, David Seymour has told us what to do. He's shown more leadership to us. Public opinion is going to be key on this. That's what he is counting on. Mm. That Barry in that call and Karen in that call, they'll they'll be they'll be wanting to make a public submission, and it'll be full of venom and hate. And Seymour's counting on more people on his side with that venom and hate and that disregard for Māori to write submissions, and we won't. There you go. And we have to. Um, just following on from that, someone who was obviously listening, uh, Ramon Travers, is that the right to say? Ramon, Ramon Travers was on after Tim. He was far more ruthless in saying what he thought about David and Winston. I loved it. Yeah, the thing about any kind of media, really, it's not necessarily a good thing, but quite often what gets eyes and ears is, is blood on the floor, which is actually why mm. News Talk ZB might be missing out on something by having such right-leaning people all the way through. If they actually got in there a... Uh, you know, a lefty who would be prepared to go argy bargy with people, they might actually find it rates unbelievably highly. Um, instead, what you could also get is this person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you went to Fiji. Sorry, I just I had the soundboard up because that's where I put the uh, the oh. trips with and, I, and I saw that and I saw this as yep. well. We're not worthy. So yeah, it all kind of it's all, it's all sitting there for me to play yep. with. I, I, I mean, I, I've reminded myself of, of one of the other things that David Seymour said, right? This whole process, we're, like, it's going to drag on for a year. Like, this this discourse, this anti maori discourse is going to be part of the, this our space for, for, a, for a year or more. Mm. It's a long fight. So, and like, I, yeah. and like I said, those people, remember, this is the thing that when people, when, when Luxon, sorry, Luxon, um, Seymour was trying to sell the idea that this won't be divisive. The people we just heard on News Talk ZB, if they don't get to put this through, they will be more vile and more nasty and more annoyed, right? So no mm. matter how this goes, there is going to be a portion of the, of the community, I wouldn't say it's 50-50, but a portion who are going to be absolutely apoplectic about this and it's going to create more division if it does go through then probably most of the people at waitangi will be the apoplectic ones who will just you know won't have anything so it's it, it can't not create division it can't not uh, create anger in society whether it goes through or not and they're just all kind of going well this is a good idea this is good we should do this and this you know it's like at least be honest at least start from the position right that this is going to really whatever happens there is going to be a sector of society that's going to be really upset and mad about this because that's kind of unchallengeable i think joey yeah and, and literally the only hope i have for someone like barry and karen there is is that they will die soon you know what one of the things that i will throw into these comment sections is dinosaurs will die the people with these old attitudes that like that that was an attitude straight out in the late 80s more than 2024 yeah yeah and the world but, is scary and he never had to consider these people's feelings before and he saw a maori in a pub once and he didn't like it you know it's it's yeah just shut yeah. up and get out of the way let the rest of us make this country better progress by attrition hey let's talk about mm. progress let's talk about evs because uh, story out today that EV sales, new EV sales have plummeted to their lowest level in three years. EV showrooms had a busy December following, uh, followed by a, it says ghostly. I guess it doesn't mean not many people are saying ghastly. ghastly. Is it, but ghastly is an A, isn't it? It says ghostly. Yeah, yeah, they've misspelled it. I, I, I bet they meant ghastly. All right. Ghastly January after the government killed 
The clean car discount recently released sales data showed a crash in new EV sales at the start of the year. Used imports followed suit, according to information published by the Ministry of Transport. The nosedive followed a busy December when more than 4,500 drivers registered New Zealand new zero emission vehicles during the final month of the discount's life, when a rebate of up to seven grand was available. Just 352 people and businesses secured an EV in January, the lowest number of brand new and New Zealand new registrations since October 2020. Meanwhile, gas guzzlers experienced the opposite. Registrations of fossil fuel cars plummeted following the general election and then spiked in January when the clean car discount set of fees no longer applied. Roughly 6,600 very high emitting vehicles producing more than 200 grams of CO2 per kilometre, oh, not CO2, sorry, carbon dioxide, is that CO2? Anyway, uh, yep. were registered last month, nearly double the typical number. Um, mm, 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 mm. And then I've got another one, but it's not scrolling for me, because the last thing I wanted to also mention was, oh, I've lost my thing. Um, there was a story, there's a part of this, which I've, I've lost the... Uh, the um, thing for to do with uh, people who have hybrids as well yep. yep so it's not going well for hybrid owners and i thought what we just do is bring up another story about that because some hybrid owners are now trying to actively remove their plugs to avoid the road road user charges thing. but there's a guy here right who now gets 15 kilometers out of his 2013 mm -hmm. hyundai plug-in hybrid and he's going to be paying double. Uh, Kevin Parker believes his 2013 plug-in hybrid Mitsubishi Outlander has halved in value since the road user charges announcement. He lives rurally. A lot of my journeys are fairly long, so for every kilometre past the end of my road, pretty much I'm going to be paying for road tax twice. He had planned to dive uh, to drive sorry, his car until it died, but he said vehicle now made no economic sense. He decided removing the plug which he thought might cost around a thousand dollars and get the car recertified as the plugless hybrid vehicle. Uh, but uh, looking up the process, he went to a vehicle certifier and told that it could not happen. So, so yeah, the, the, the government who on one hand is talking about what they're doing to protect the environment, have canceled the, uh, the EV clean car rebate which was now which was then paying for itself i think november was the first month it paid for itself so it was net it was neutral which means all it did was encourage people into evs and it was costing it was watching the costing the country nothing they pulled the plug on that and high emission vehicles have spiked which will mean things like utes and trucks and vans and as you all know only 10 percent of utes are actually registered for business so 90 percent of people who own vote their utes aren't farmers aren't you know aren't um tradies they're just people like me and you so there you go Chewy, this is your this is your baby the ev world this, so this, this is my that. wheelhouse um yeah, look it makes a good headline i think it's slightly uh, misleading again the mainstream media not digging in um a lot of dealers uh especially for new vehicles would have registered their stock first so they would have re registered them as as demonstrators so and then they'll sell them technically second hand the, technically they'll the technically second hand they'll discount because they've claimed that seven thousand dollars and they'll sell it in a demonstrator sale less than a, a truly new vehicle uh, because they, they had all that stock and you you might as well right i think the second hand market is instantly going to dry up because there was a huge amount of people bringing in secondhand Japanese leafs that you can get for like less than 10 grand now. Um, so I think the next couple of months, I think will give us a clearer sign of, of how it's affected. What I think is, is the real telling bit is how poorly thought out the changes to the road user charges are. National painted themselves into a corner when they went on an anti-EV uh, thing and they, they they were against the clean car discount and the ute tax and that sort of thing they have put themselves in a position where they had to bring that out they wanted to do it in the first hundred days and they fucking have they never looked at any of the unintended consequences simeon brown has said 
that this is the first step in bringing in road user charges for all passenger vehicles. The sensible thing would have been to do the work. Leave EVs how they are, just extend it, knowing that you have a year to put together a new road user charge framework that would affect every passenger vehicle on the road. You remove fuel excess from petrol at the same time. Yeah. Then, like Simi has been talking about fairness, that is a fair playing field. It does not matter if you have a, a full battery electric vehicle. It doesn't matter if you have a plug-in hybrid. It doesn't matter if you have a hybrid. It doesn't matter if you have a ute. It doesn't matter if you have a motorbike. Everybody is affected by that. You get a huge ping of public opinion because you the price of petrol would go down. And it's overhauling a system that has been in desperate need of overhauling for decades. But national do short-term thinking. They don't look at these sort of things. So now they've pissed off these people. As far as the guy with the Outlander, it's, it's the perfect example. Something like that with a small battery, like living rurally makes no sense. Yep. Like but th it, but those 20, little... but if, he, if he owned it from you, say, he didn't have many choices in 2013, mm. really. Yeah. And it, it, it's 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 just a case of like when those those plug-in hybrids they're great in the city if you're driving something like an Outlander and you don't want to piss your money away on petrol, mm -hmm. you know they're great. You get 40, 50 kilometers of, of battery usage. Like most people's average daily use is around that. You get home, you plug it into the charger. Cool. It costs you a couple of bucks. You know, your battery electric vehicles, I mean, mine is an example. It cost me $6 to fill if I charge it at home. It cost me $12 on a charger, like on a paid charger, um, that sort of thing. I in, in all of the EV groups that I'm in, everybody's like, of course, of course we need to pay road user charges. We've had a good run, but this doesn't feel fair. And people have crunched the numbers, and the only winners here are people with, small efficient diesels um or, or very efficient petrol cars if you have a battery electric vehicle like me you're paying over the barrel and if if you have a plug-in hybrid like the guy in the story you're getting fucked yeah and that's because nobody's done the work nobody's crunched the numbers nobody's reached out to any of the advocate groups about this nobody's been spoken to they've just gone oh ev's bad yeah, it's a well, fair playing I mean, field, and it's not. Yeah, there's a there's an interesting thought about taking the kind of user charges off petrol, whatever the correct term that is, the tax off petrol. Because when I used to work <laughs> at petrol stations when I was a student, you know, you'd always get guys coming in who were doing big jobs like gro groundskeepers and that kind of stuff, filling up, you know, two hundred gallon hmm. or liter, whatever things with petrol for all their equipment, and they were technically paying road user charges to put into their uh, chainsaws and that kind of stuff. So you can see there's boats. other reasons or boats, yeah, other reasons for that as well. But I mean, it's, to be really honest with you, I mean, I've said this a couple of times, I, I'm probably within the next six months getting a car, new car, my car's sort of coming to the end of its life. And I have been really keen to look at an EV. But just that that difference now, it just makes me it makes it not as attractive as it was. Maybe I'll take a step backwards and investigate. Like I've been looking at a Suzuki Swift, a new Suzuki Swift. You know, mm. it's like that's little. It's thirteen hundred cc's. It's turbo. It'll be uh, economical as, and it'll be okay on the open road. I'll get a manual one. So it's 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 changed the um, it's it's changed the horizon a bit for me when it comes to buying a car. And I imagine it'll be for lots of people. If people can buy any car they want. Like if, if budgets aren't an issue, of course they were going to get an EV and get the rebate. It makes all the sense in the world. What will they do now? Well, that's an interesting question because they don't have the incentive to do that. What will they do? I guess we'll wait and see. I, I, I can tell you now. You jump you jump on Trade Me or Turners or, or something like that and search for EVs. You will you will see um, a bunch of cars that have less than two hundred Ks that are still at that same price that they were towards the end of last year. Uh, you go on turners that absolutely flooded with X lease vehicles um, that are at good prices. Uh, they're, they're still around, and I, st I still think they make sense. Um, 
do I believe that Simeon Brown will review this? I don't know. Is there going to be enough pressure? I, I see a lot of crowing in, in, in the stories uh, about this, about how EVs have dropped off a cliff, suggesting that the only reason that people were going out and spending, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand on, a, on an EV was because they were going to get a $7,000 rebate. That's not why people were buying them. Um, it's an, it's they an they still make sense. But it's an incentive. It's like I was, if you can get... 10 bucks off something you'll you'll go to get it if it doesn't cost you 10 bucks to do it it, it may not be the main reason but it's just an incentive it's an incentive yep. to do it you know I, I i just yeah i mean i i i think obviously because it was neutral it was paying for itself there was no reason to change it um i was talking to my 17 year old today and i was reading the story and we talked about it for a while and i said to her something that interestingly enough i think is pretty accurate for this government two of the sort of um two of the industries that are doing the best or who are happiest who are laughing the most and clapping the most at the moment are the petroleum industry because of the ev oh. stuff and the uh, tobacco industry because of the smoke free stuff so yeah. this government has a in, in this in the grandstand that's watching this government the ones that are hooping and hollering and cheering the most at the moment uh, the tobaccoists and the petroleum companies and if you listen to martin bradbury uh perhaps the uh, mining groups are just getting ready to start clapping in a few minutes so it's a pretty ugly thing to think that those are the groups that are the ones that are going to be happiest about this government i think that puts it into a uh into uh, into clarity as to what these guys are all about yeah and, and i mean just to reiterate the entire reason behind the ev rebate was to get more secondhand vehicles into the pipeline down the line yeah um and certainly th that happened like I, I don't regard the nissan leaf especially the second hand ones very well but there are a ton of them and you could pick up a full battery electric vehicle for less than 10 grand at one point didn't have huge range but they were still there and they were you know affordable for people yeah. um and i think i think one of the the, the missed opportunities was to talk about energy independence in this country like you saw the impact that closing Mars, the point had and all, all of that sort of stuff if the more of our national fleet that we could transition to battery the more renewable energy generation we could we could do and i've, I've spoken about micro generation and stuff like that if you're fueling your car off wind and sun and you're not worried about a tanker coming to new zealand and us having to refine it or whatever is happening in the Middle East has affected the, the crude barrel price or that sort of thing. That's good for this country. Like for the farmers and that sort of thing that have land to put up solar panels to fuel their vehicles and fuel their tractors and they don't need to pay out money. That was a benefit. Long-term thinking is what we need. Not short-term, long-term yeah. thinking. We need to it's transition. Fine. It's funny because for the stuff that they need to be focusing on short term, the now they're not, and for the stuff that they need mm. to be focusing on the long term, they're not. So the thing that we need to be focusing on now is these issues for Māori issues around the treaty and fucking Luxon's talking yep. about 2040, 2040, 2040. For things like yep. EV stuff and that sort of thing, they're talking about the now when we should be talking about 2050, 2050, 2050. Yeah, because their because their next their next biggest problem is three years from now. Well, I actually think with our conversation we've just had, I think they've got a problem now. I think that one of the things you might see in this government is still folding to people like uh, Peters and Winston Peters will flip over a desk in a heartbeat. You know, he, he has no loyalty. It's Winston first and he will flip it over in a heartbeat. I think you'll see through this cycle, uh, those two minor parties, absolutely it's the, be the tail wagging the dog. And I wouldn't be surprised, it scares me to say this out loud about the referendum, but it wouldn't be surprised if some policies that National doesn't really want to be associated with, I don't know which ones, will end up getting through, because if they don't, someone's going to flip over the table. Just my thoughts. Anywho, do we have anything else we want to get to in the chat before we head off for the night? Uh, no, I think that's about it. We got a um, we got a uh, super chat there from Junk Rig Sailor. Apart from Tim Roxburgh and to a lesser extent Ramon Travers, uh, they are both not regular hosts. ZB is nothing but nutcase right wing hosts from five a.m. to eight p.m. And his um, his old what's his name used to be on ZM, Fovo FM, 
Lee, not Lee. Oh, Lee. Marcus, Marcus Lash. Lash. I see you on some of the evenings. He's sort of a, he's sort of a, he's sort of a broadcaster, one of the, like a classic broadcaster. He'll just, it's just the facts, man. We'll just talk about topics. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the $10 super chat junk. Um, we appreciate that greatly. Other than that, oh, Peter was saying this. I've played this guy on the show a couple of times. Uh, James O'Brien on LBC in the UK. Uh, he's been a stalwart critic of the Tories and is still the most popular host on mm. an otherwise right wing network. Yeah, he's he's a genius. I listen to him on YouTube fairly regularly. Um, some of the stuff he's done on Trump and it's just he's just an absolute genius. I would love to interview or be. I don't know how you could interview him. Have a conversation. Probably go no further than that because he is the interviewer. Um, all right, I'm done. What about you, Chewy? Anything else you want to throw out there? We got anything else to get to? Buy an EV. They're great. They're fun. All right. When the time comes, you and I will talk. I know you love doing research. Maybe you can find me something. Yep. I'll give you a budget. $8.50? Will that get me something? $12? Uh, that's that's uh, probably about two or 300 kilometers an hour of uh, easy, conscience-free driving. Maybe those Leafs have dropped down to about 50 bucks each. You get a Leaf for 50 bucks these days? You can get a Leaf for about seven grand last time I checked. Mm. all right guys now remember uh we have got uh dr alistair reese coming on tomorrow night he was one of the uh he made a speech he was one of the speakers at the dawn service at waitangi day and also we um will most likely as we always intend to do it's our intention to whether it happens or not no it's our intention to open up discord tomorrow night as well to get some feedback from you it's been a really really busy week thank you so much for being a part of what we've been doing and look i want to put this out there when we open up discord we normally maybe even always get people who were sort of in the same echo chamber as I would be perfectly happy tomorrow night to hear from a couple of people, obviously politely and respectfully who disagree with us. Just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to this uh, on demand, whatever tomorrow night, and if you disagree with us respectfully, then uh, we'd love to hear from you tomorrow night. Maybe anyway, that's us for now. Thanks team. Love you all to bits. We will catch you tomorrow night from 9 PM for another edition of big hero news. Stay safe. I come back tomorrow night and bring a friend. And until then, hooroo. Cheers, fam.